fragments of silicon, not something you can bl blame on alien DNA or nocturnal visitations. Welcome to another installment of Fragments of Silicon. Uh, I'm your host, Adam. Joining me as always is the regular crew. Let's get to the news, such as it is. Um, Twilight, why don't you start us off this week? All right. Well, um, yeah, as usual, not much going on to thanks to COVID-19, though. I can say things are going pretty well at work concerning the mandatory mask uh, wearing uh, order, thankfully. Uh, we've been handing out uh, masks uh, at the front door um, for customers to wear and offering hand sanitizer as well. So all, all is well and good there. Um, besides that, it's been hot. Um, I haven't really done much in terms of gaming for this week, and that's about it. Makes sense. Uh, Alex, you're up. Uh, it's been uncomfortably hot and humid for the last few days, and it's going to continue to be so, so that's been kind of a pain. It's have not been sleeping particularly well. Um, otherwise, uh, my car passed its inspection, although there are some things I need to get taken care of sooner or later because there always are so I have to figure out plans for doing that um uh video game wise not too much amazingly interesting although uh my time uh clock on pokemon sword and shield is approaching 980 hours damn which I am somewhat proud and somewhat ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more ashamed if it was like the first month after release. Yeah. Oh, I did end up playing uh, some Breath of the Wild with my dad over the weekend, too. And uh, uh, it's, it's a bit of an adjustment for him getting used to games where you can control the camera movement and having to, like, jump and grab stuff at the... He, he holds his thumb higher, so it's harder to move between buttons quickly, but... Uh, Insert joke like about back good. in my day? <laughs> I kind of, I mean... But anyway, he's, he enjoyed it enough that we're going to try and do it again this weekend, so... Yay, bonding. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I think that's about it. That's about it. All right, then your go, Petty. All right, it's been mostly dull this week because, you know, not a whole lot of stuff to do. Um, as far as gaming stuff goes, uh, I th beat the campaign of Mortal Kombat 11 and the Aftermath DLC. So hmm. that was an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done any of the branching paths, though, so I may see about doing that later on. And I've also started playing um, Code Vein, I believe it's called. And mm. so far, I'm enjoying it a lot better than Dark Souls. <laughs> I want to make a joke about you, you thinking the game is about you, but I feel like that's a little on the obscure side, and also I can't phrase it well, so... Considered acknowledged, but not really pushed. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's about it for me. Been really, really slow and rainy. All right, All right it's my go. I mean, uh, I guess the biggest news is got the rodent problem taken care of. Nippy. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. 
So for now. No, it, it was just the one creature. Yeah. So is it ever think, just the one? Just one rat got in to the tool uh, shed. Okay. Uh, Wasn't an infestation. It was the door was left open, and you know, a stray rodent got in. It has, you know, it has subsequently been egressed out. So, and yeah, uh, that's about it from my avenue for current events, the future events. Ugh. Uh, my brother is trying, to, my younger brother is trying to relocate to Florida and yeah, that's a bald concern for very obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, like, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think he quite gets what, how, um, you know, how bad it is because he wants to meet up after he relocates. I'm like, <laughs> usually we move away from massive disease outbreaks. Yeah, but he's in Iowa and you know what? yeah, you know, what? yeah, I'm just saying, you know, he, he can't find a job there. So he's moving back here. I mean, look, fair enough. Look, look it, it's not my idea. It's not my call to make. I just hope no one gets sick. And, like, at best, we would meet at a fucking public park or something because, you know, the virus still rages. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that's about it for me. So... Uh, that's about it for our news segment. So merrily we shall roll along to the interview portion of the broadcast. So, and this week we have BU of Whitethorn Game. Hey, everybody. Hey, uh, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. Happy to be here. Thanks Good for having me. Uh, no, not a problem. Not a problem. All right. So how we like to get started. We like to get to know the people behind the game studio and what have you. And we do that by asking them this question. What got you interested in video games, both on a personal and a professional level? Oh, man. Well, I've um, I've been playing games since I was probably ooh, maybe six. Uh, my step-grandfather had um, a computer when I was a kid and had, um, oh, this was back in what, 90, I don't know, 97-ish. Um, and he had a magic school bus game. So whenever we came over to stay um, with my grandparents, he would let us come and play on his computer. Uh, so that was kind of the beginning of my um, my love of video games. After that, uh, I got an NES console, and me and my brother would play games all the time. So I, I kind of, my first consoles were a 3DO and an NES. So I got to play these like old school games um for a while i didn't get a new console um for a long time so after that i think it was like a gamecube <laughs> Jeez, i think that's the first time we've had somebody on the program mentioned a 3do growing up <laughs> i think i was the only person with one <laughs> it was great though i had um putt putt and fatty bear and they had a lot of good kids games on it um and uh gex gex probably one of my favorites but yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so how did that advance into, you know, a professional career, as it were? Oh, uh, well, um, it took some time. So I, I played games growing up with my brother mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, became an adult and had jobs and kind of got away from gaming for a little while. Um, but then uh, I got a PlayStation 4 and discovered Twitch. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, immediately with Twitch. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I can like live chat with people and play video games and just have a good time and, you know, meet people to game with. And that led to um, being a full-time content creator um, through Twitch. And then I eventually joined Mixer. And through Mixer, I was at a PAX West at the ID at Xbox event where I met Whitethorn. Uh, They Mm -hmm. were showing off of their game where the bees make honey. And I just started uh, chatting with them. As as you guys can see, my name's BU. And obviously a game about bees uh, intrigued me. Um, but one thing led to another. And they uh, they asked me to be their community manager. And here we are. 
I'm like fairly unconventional, but not not the first time we've had a person who does the you know the Twitch community thing and transitioned into a community representative on this program. Like, and uh, anyway, so in terms of games we are showcasing, we have three featured. And I suppose the first one we'll start off is the one that's been released. Um, okay. That's Evans Remain. Yes. It was right. really hard to pick out three of our games. We have so many wonderful titles. Um, but Evans Remains definitely has a special place in my heart. Um, I've been um, following it since uh, the Kickstarter uh, when we when he came aboard. I'll let you watch the trailer. <laughs> or, or however you guys want to do it. <laughs> Sorry. I can play the trailer audio if you want. Give me one second. Yeah. Been a while, but sure, we can do that. Um, okay, it's it's up to you. I can chat about it or yeah. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, just bear with us because he's got to get the audio. Yeah, I just yeah. it's it's a little bit more difficult on Discord, but it's still not that bad. No. Alrighty. Okay. All right, I think we're clear. All right. Yeah. So that was zoomed a little weird. I couldn't see the very top, but yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. So Evans Remains is being billed as a combination of uh, logic puzzle game and action platform. Um. I suppose the first question is. Uh, oh, and uh, it's got a narrative inspired by Japanese graphic adventure games. I do have to ask, exactly what does that mean in terms of inspired by visual novel or what have you? All right. Uh, well, visual novels um, are, are visual stories. They have um, lovely pictures and animations and, and graphics that go along with uh, at boxes that you, you know, you can progress the story as you as you go. Um, I guess kind of like an interactive book with pictures. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually hadn't really played any visual novels, um, not too many up until this game. So it was kind of a new uh, game genre for me. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not big into reading normally, but having the game to break it up um, was really nice. So you go through these these story, um, you know, conversations between Dysis and the characters around her. And um, between those, you have these um, puzzle platformers uh, that you play through. Um, they're, they're hieroglyphs um, on this ancient civilization, and they all represent um, a word to um, a puzzle they're trying to solve. Mm. And, like, how do the, the puzzles lay out in terms of, like, the words? Is, the, is there, like, an association going on here? Like, or do you have to, like, comb the levels for that particular word or something? Uh, they're... they're um... They, they, you don't have to like solve what the puzzle means. It, the story kind of tells you later on that you know each one represents a word, and it tells you the the message that they they have to tell. Um, they're trying to find a lost boy. Um, so basically, I'll start at the beginning here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm um a little scattered today. Uh, so basically, you start off as this woman named Dysis. She finds herself on this deserted island uh, that's supposed to be uninhabited. They had gotten a message from a 
genius boy that's been missing for a while, uh, requesting her to come find him on this island. Um, so she gets there, doesn't really know what's going on. Um, and she has a uh, communication with um, Upring, uh, which is this you know, big corporation um, that's trying to find him. And uh, so she has to kind of put that together. So she, she just uh, wanders around this island and she runs into um, some people and she has to interrogate them to try to figure out if this boy is really here. Um, but the hieroglyphs or the puzzles, they get in your way and uh, she likes to solve them. Um, and then later she discovers that they're a part of um, part of a bigger story. Okay. And I'm assuming this lost boy is the titular Evan? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. All right. And um, is there a particular trait that would make him special? Like, um, I'm assuming, like, he's a boy genius or something? Mm -hmm. or he's uh, designed some really big technologies. Um, you'll see her later on in the story go into, like, this crazy portal um, they have these uh, these um, interesting communication devices um, and things like that. So he's he's designed a lot of technology and then just went missing one day without a trace. And then this hmm. is the first time they've heard from him since. I see. Now, in terms of any of that technology, uh, like, uh, do you encounter that on the island? Like, um will you encounter some of his inventions that might give you a jumping power up or something like that? Uh, no, he just, just, um, it, it goes along with the story, but it doesn't affect uh, the gameplay or the puzzles. The puzzles were left there by the ancient civilization. Um, that has, has, is no longer there. Kind of like city of Atlantis type of, uh, situation, but there are, um, various, um types of blocks in the puzzles if you noticed a minute ago she went to a teleportation one uh there are some that make you jump higher um some of the blocks will change the puzzles completely so okay so there are uh, it's good to see that there are some jumping puzzles as well like a lot of uh puzzle platformers forget that forget the platforming part like but anyway now in terms of the visual novels is that a presentation merely for conversations or will it have like say choices that affect the narrative uh it is linear so there won't be choices um but it is it has a lot of twists and turns and it's very engaging mysterious um definitely keeps you hooked and i'm assuming you can't date anyone in those <laughs> segments either not a not a dating sim yeah we're <laughs> rather familiar with visual novels let's say mm -hmm. like so um now how long do you would you estimate that this game would take like is it a short game is it a long game uh this game usually takes four to six hours depending on how fast you read and, and get through the puzzles um but yeah, it, it can vary. But our games tend to be short. Uh with White Thorn, we like these kind of bite sized uh, games that you can sit down and play for a little while and put down when you need to, you know, go take care of the kids or, or make dinner. Um, but we, we like these digestible experiences that leave, um, you know, leave a little bit of an impact without, you know, needing you to spend, you know, 100 hours in a game. Understandable. Uh, very understandable. Um and yeah, I suppose um, I'll see if my colleagues here have any other questions about Evan's remains. Uh, I think I'm good. No real questions, but I think the art style is really cute, especially for the uh, action sprites. Oh, thank you. I like, I like the hair wiggles. <laughs> Matias did a wonderful job. He is a solo developer down in Argentina. Um, he did have... I think one other person that he worked with on like some of the assets, but um, as you see, her hair is blowing in the wind. All of this was done frame by frame, so there's no shaders mm -hmm. on it or anything. So, mm. um, yeah, he put a lot of work and effort into polishing um, his sprites and making it a kind of a magical island. Um, but the game's been re very well received. It came out June 11th, and uh, we've gotten some lovely, lovely reviews and. Um, 
been a lot of fun. Lots of lovely feedback. Uh, gamers seem to be really enjoying it and uh, and and getting something from the story. I've really loved watching streamers play it when they get to the big cliffhanger, um, the big reveal, and their mouth just drops and they stop talking for a minute. It's it's been really fun. Oh, that sounds like it makes for some interesting viewing. Like. <laughs> Don't think we're going to be able uh, be reaching that though, here anyway. Oh yeah, anyway, because mm -hmm. we do have to shift forward uh, to our second game featured, and it's called Calico. Uh, now, um, I'll preface the audience: you may have seen this trailer, and indeed the trailer for the third game, um, in one of the many many events that are going on like this particular trailer was featured in the gorilla collective that was held not too long ago that was such a lovely event they showed so many great games mm. yeah i think my problem with with this approach is they do start blending together so you know it's a matter of remembering what got shown where so. Oh, yeah, so many online events since we can't go to cons this year. Um, we did get to attend PAX East uh, to show our games off, and it was a lot of fun. And then, uh, you know, COVID hit, and we weren't able to, you know, show at GDC or um, the other events we were planning on going to. It's been uh, it's been an interesting year for games, for sure. That was a very large kitty out by the fence. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That's so, yeah, so to get into Calico... Uh, this is a community sim, ga sim game, and in case you haven't uh, caught on yet, it's very, very uh, heavy on cats. <laughs> yeah. Lots of cats. Yeah. yeah. In, in fact, your task is to rebuild the town's cat cafe and fill, fill it with cats. Like, you know... Probably one of the more adorable quest objectives you're going to encounter. Like, but, um, God, I, I'm sure there are all sorts of questions to be addressed here. <laughs> this is such yeah. a fun one. Yeah, it's like, I, I suppose one might start with why cats? Uh, <laughs> why not cats? <laughs> uh, so uh, this game is done by a very small team. Um, Kells is uh, the main developer, along with Andrew. And um, mm -hmm. they have a composer, uh, John. And um, and then they've been working with a couple of people outside to help design furniture and, and things like that. But um, it's been, it's pretty been, it's mostly been the very small core team. This one was a Kickstarter game as well. Um, so thanks to all of our awesome Kickstarter backers for helping make this game happen. Um, so yeah, you're, you're a, a magical girl running a cat cafe. Um, there will be more than just kitties though, uh, for all our animal lovers out there. There's, as you saw in the trailer, there's going to be foxes and bears and capybaras and, and ferrets and rabbits and all of your, your favorite animals. So I think there's, oh, I think there's something like 30, 30 plans for the release of the game and possibly more coming later. I figure you get at least one bonus point for having a rideable bear. <laughs> That's going to be the best part. So there's like all these different magic potions that you'll have to change your 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 pets that you collect into magical pets. <laughs> and it's the big um, kitty. It's, yeah. I mean, we're looking at a particularly stretchy kitty there. Like, <laughs> um, so I'm assuming there's some potions that might affect the appearance of some of these animals. Mm -hmm. Um, in the demo, I, I don't know if the demo is still available. They they used it during the Gorilla Collective, but um, like there's a cat that's like this galaxy cat that looks like the space colors and stuff. Uh, some of the potions will shrink your animals down into little bitty animals that will go in a, a terrarium that you carry in your pocket, and you can also shrink down into this little terrarium <laughs> with your tiny animals. Um, and then they're, they they've got one that turns. Um, like your cat into a giant ball that you can roll on top of. Uh, so there's just all kind of, there's going to be all kinds of silly things. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of toys uh, to engage with the animals. Uh, in the demo, you've got like a, a a stick with a ball hanging off of it, and the cats like to play with that one. And the laser pointer. Um, there's going to be a lot of different toys as well for the animals to interact with. So I see there's at least some degree of character 
character creation here since you have different uh, dress colors and hairstyles. Is that about it or is there a lot to that or? There will be a lot to that, um, since this is kind of like a dollhouse sim. Uh, you can definitely build a customized character um, at the beginning of the game, and then buy new outfits and, and hairstyles and things for it later. Uh, they also plan to release a companion app that will just be for uh, designing your character, kind of just like a you know like a little doll doll dress up game for your your phone. Mm. Well, b bonus points at least for having the. Uh default slash demo character be a uh, slightly plus sized and uh, darker skinned magical girl because mm -hmm. those are definitely definitely underserved demographics in the magical girl community indeed they are thank you for for noting that um i'm i'm really excited to see that because you don't see that in games um like we talked about earlier i grew up playing video games but I didn't have any characters like this in my games and it's i think it's going to be really special for for people to have that experience where they can relate to their characters possibly although i, I suppose um you know the next question that comes up is is it you know is your character necessarily need to be a magical girl like mm -hmm. you know be a magical boy you'll be able to choose your genders and non uh, non-binary as well you okay, can make the character no. any way you'd like Okay. Yeah, we they really want people to play this game and express themselves, you know, through through their characters, through decorating their house, through the animals they decide to bring in. Um, it's supposed to be a very relaxing experience. Play the way you want. You know, you're not having to 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 collect those bells to pay Tom Nook to keep your you know business open. So <laughs> uh, they tried to keep it very um, very stress free. You can just kind of escape into this little magical world. Nothing wrong with that. Um, now, in terms of the magical side of things, like, uh, you know, does that just extend to, say, flying around as we see in the trailer? Or, you know, will you have to fight evil at some point? <laughs> uh, as far as I know, there's no fighting evil. Um, yeah, maybe some of the characters might get an attitude with you. But <laughs> as far as I know, there, there won't be any uh, battle sequences. <laughs> <laughs> it is important to clarify that since you know that's a big part of what magical girls are at least some titles oh so yeah but, definitely very powerful magical girls out there um i mean you know we could get into a dissertation about what magical girls were what magical girls are like magical girls didn't actually like start off fighting evil it was much more well like this slice of life comedy situation Mm -hmm. That's a conversation for another time and place. Um, anyway, now in terms of like uh, management, um, I'm assuming this is a very casual thing as well. Like, you're not going to be tracking ledgers and um, supplies and uh, things that you might do in like Sim City or something or mm -hmm. Tropico. I think it'll be a more milder version of that. Um, you will be able to make lots of different um, desserts and things. So you'll be able to, you know, if, if one of your customers prefers cakes over scones, I, I'd assume you'd be able to cater to those customers as well um, and carry lots of different types of desserts and, and snacks in the, in the tray. So you will be able to sell pastries to make money to buy new furniture, outfits, and things like that, things for your pets. So there will be some aspect to to like the uh, the economy side of it, but I don't think it'll be like a stressful situation. Like, oh, I got to pay my taxes on this cupcake I just sold. I mean, yeah, there are games that do that. Like yeah. Restaurant Empire comes to mind. So <laughs> uh, I do enjoy that. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, and let's see. Um. Now, will there be any options for romance in this? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I actually don't have the answer. I don't think I've ever asked Kells about romance. Um, there will be questing and, and making friends with the, the villagers and things. There's going to be lots of different uh, NPC characters to interact with. Um, I am not sure if you'll be romancing them or not. Well, I mean... Uh... 
don't have a follow up to that since there's not an answer. Uh, uh, I will have to. I will have to find out. Duly noted. Duly noted. Um, you know, because I'm sure that's that's going to come up. Like, oh, <laughs> for sure. Uh, anyway, uh, now, in terms of like food serves, is it all going to be sweet stuff, um, or will there be savory items as well? I'm going to guess there'll be some savory items. Uh, I haven't seen the list in a while, um, but she, uh, Kels is very active with the community, um, especially in their Discord. Um, so I'm sure if, if there's a demand for some more savory items, I prefer savory over sweet myself. Um, I would assume there might be. Um, there will be mini baking or, um, mini games uh, throughout Calico. Uh, along with the baking mini game, I do believe there's going to be some gardening, um, and other little things like that that you would expect um, in kind of these relaxing titles. But I haven't seen them yet, so they're keeping keeping them secrets. <laughs> I could see that. Um, this was another aspect uh, that i um, not sure that it can be talked about at this point is like uh, modes. Like, is it just going to be, say, a casual mo a reform mode? Or like, is it going to be a story mode? Um, an objective mode, like where you have to, like, get a certain amount or you know build a certain thing in say three years. So from what I've heard, um, to progress the game, you will want to go on quest um, and help your your villagers out um, and, and collect various animals. Um, but it doesn't hold you strict to a uh, like a linear path. Um, so you'll you know if you want to just swim on a cat through the lake you, you can do that um but there are five sections to the island it's, um it's shaped like a giant star so there's going to be like a um like a beach area the city um up in the mountains with the hot springs so i i think you'll probably you know go on little quests here and there they're not going to be super heavy um to keep it so you can play how you 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 like but there will be a, a path um, for those who enjoy doing that and advancing their cafe. But as far as like sandbox modes or anything like that, I'm I'm not sure on that one. Duly noted. Okay, um, it's like the third or fourth time we got to that coloring the uh, fondant on the cake thing. Mm -hmm. And this whole time I was thinking that the cursor was like a hand holding a tissue <laughs> or something. And I just, just realized that it's a, that it's an actual like piping bag and I'm like, well that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Currently in the demo you can you can draw on the cakes. Um there's a couple tools for that, but they're still still polishing it. Um they're aiming for quarter four. Um and uh yeah so by the end of the year you should be able to get your hands on this one. Right. Uh so this is on Steam is uh fall twenty twenty. Um and is this game only going to be for the PC? It will be on all consoles, um, your Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, um, as well as PC. And I do believe Mac and Linux as well. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right. Um, right. I'll see you once again. Uh, see if my colleagues have any other questions about Calico before we move on to our final game of the evening. Uh, I think I said mine. Okay. Yeah, I think all I'm good. that question has been answered. <laughs> all right. All right. So our final game for the evening is actually one we featured on the show uh, quite a while ago. Um, looking at our archives, it was last summer, and the game is Lake. Um, right. So for the uninitiated, what is Lake? Lake um, is about Meredith. It's set in 1986 in Oregon. She has been working hard in the big city and she's burnt out and needs a break from it, um, from all that, that stress and hustle bustle of the, of the city. So she moves back to her hometown uh, to be a, a male person and, um, and she's, she's getting to know the locals and, um, and kind of trying to get used to uh, this new slower lifestyle to kind of find herself again. Hmm. Yes, I remember this uh, coming up last time. I remember yeah. playing this. I enjoyed it. It's yeah. pretty low-key, but, like, in a good way. 
yeah, when we talked to Gamius about it, they hand they gave us like a uh, alpha. Oh really? Which, oh, that's that had, cool. Uh huh. Um, and yes, this is the one we had to record twice. <laughs> yes, and I think that episode had uh, some audio problems you were having that particular day. Mm hmm. Like, like, um, but anyway, so how did Whitethorn come across the lake? That's a good question. Um, so Whitethorn, usually uh, we have, you know, we have an, an email that people can pitch us games to. I I do community management, so I, I wasn't uh, involved in the uh, the relationship uh, that formed between us and Gamius. But um, mm -hmm. I'm glad it did because this game is awesome. Uh, so yes, a lot of times uh, what games do, they'll, they'll pitch us their games looking for funding or, or porting. Um, mm -hmm. Publishers do various things. Some of them have, you know, some of them just front the money. Some of them do a lot of the, you know, they help with the development of the game as well. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess we just got in contact and it ended up being a, a good, a good relationship. Good to hear. Good to hear. And yeah, from what we uh, experienced last summer, the game is yeah pretty low key, but pretty interesting. Um, yeah, uh, I've enjoyed watching the, the graphics uh, improve as uh, as the game's been in development. Um, I'm sure last year when you played it, it was probably a little bit more simpler. Um, but they keep adding these little details and things that really are bringing the world to life. Yeah, this definitely looks sharper than uh, what we encountered last summer. Makes sense about a. You know, we're talking about a year's worth of development time. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, kind of, it's hard coming up questions that we didn't ask last time around. You know, and it's doubly so because we are familiar with what the game is and such, but you know, the audience mm -hmm. may not necessarily be. Um, but yeah, have you experienced playing Lake yet? I actually haven't. I know this sounds bad. Um, we had it displayed, and um, you could play it at PAX East. But sometimes I just like to wait till closer to time to play some of our titles. But I did watch a lot of people play it. Um, yeah, I have not got my hands on it, but I really love the the concept of it. Um, it's a short game, kind of kind of like Evans Remains. You play through it, mm -hmm. you know, in a, you know a couple hours, you know. Uh, but what's really neat about it is you can play it again and again, and the town's alive. So whatever you're doing on one side of town, things are still happening on the other. So when you play through it again, you can encounter different, a totally different story because you're you're meeting you know different people and and making different choices. So there's a lot of replay value in this game. Um, yeah, I ran into in the two the like two times I played the alpha, there were some events that I missed out on the second time that I got to the first time because I went a different way and didn't get to that part of the route until uh, later. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, we do have a question from the chat. E-Wizard asks, can you play the Ghost Blasters arcade game within it? Oh, I hope so. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm going to have yeah. a them right now um i don't know that's that's really fun i'm hoping that you can pet the cat there's a kitty cat on the porch and that i if, if i can't pet the cat i'm gonna be a little upset i think it loses like 30 points if you can't pet the kitty <laughs> right i know there's like a website that has like a can you pet the cat index on well i've seen the pet the dog uh, twi uh twitter accounts my favorite twitter <laughs> yes I don't think I've seen Pet the Cat, but I'm pretty sure it exists. Like, it's the internet; it exists. It's, it's like the same website, like does both of those. I think I don't know if they have a Twitter account for both of them, though. Yeah, yeah. a Twitter account. <laughs> and that, that's not a surprise. That's not a surprise. <laughs> um, anyway, um, can you give us an update on like where the game is in terms of like release? Like, uh, you know, because I see it shooting uh, quarter one, 2021. Uh, we, are, you know? we are still on track for, for those dates. 
So okay. everything I think has been going smoothly. Um, some of our teams um, are are really open about where they are in development and they want to share everything that's happening. And then some some developing um, uh, studios, they like to keep it kind of hush hush and they have big reveals as they go. Um, so Lake, Lake's been kind of in the middle of that, but they they are um, definitely on track for, for those launch dates. That's good to hear. And uh, is this coming to consoles as well? It It is, yes. Yeah, I think I saw that in the like the Gorilla Collective trailer somewhere. Like, I think it was featured at like maybe Microsoft's uh, third-party conference. I know I saw it somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, we just showed um, during that big Xbox conference last week. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought as much. Like, anyway, um, I'll see if my uh, colleagues here have any other questions about Lake. I think I'm good. I'm good. All right, then. Um, so, yeah, um, that's about it in terms of uh, featured releases here today. Um, I suppose very quickly, is there any other games you want to mention at this point in time? Oh, um, I, we just launched a title called We Should Talk, um, yeah. which is, if you enjoy the narrative-driven titles, uh, this is another one you can add to your wish list. Uh, we should talk as a short form narrative driven game. You are in your favorite bar, hanging out, talking to the bartender, um, and then you're you're getting messages from your girlfriend and having to deal with your relationship, um, and just encountering you know the interesting people who who wander into the bar. But it's about a twenty minute experience. But what's really cool about it is the way you you answer and talk to the people around you. It's got this really neat mechanic that they, they call it a, senten a sentence spinner. You can change each section of the sentence to say what you want to say. Um, it really makes you think about the words you use, whether you're talking about, you know, I, we, or you, or, you know, when you, when you add those little tiny words into text messages, they can change kind of the whole the vibe of the sentence. And um, it, it really makes you think about how your words matter and how you use them. And uh, it's it's a really cool game just launched uh, this month. And um, yeah, it's, it's called We Should Talk. Hmm. Uh, Sounds interesting. Like, <laughs> definitely unique. Like, Very. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen this mechanic in any other games. And I haven't really seen anybody suggest any other games with a similar mechanic. So it's it's definitely a, a neat a I neat think one. the the, the closest thing that comes to mind is uh, a game called Use Your Word. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one. I'm not. I'll have to look that one up. Use Your Word. Well, anyway, um, mm -hmm. so be you, I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule and being with us here today. Um, you know, it was wonderful hearing about uh, some of the games that Whitethorn has released and has upcoming. And, you know, maybe we'll have you back on the program uh, in the future to talk about more of these. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed being on here and sharing our titles with you all. No, no problem. No problem. Anyway, uh, the games are Evans Remains, uh, Lake, and Calico. Um, either go, uh, you know, go to like Steam and pick them up or wish list them as the uh, release date may be. Um, anyway, Petty, play us in the next segment. All right, welcome to the topic of discussion. This is the part of the show where we, well, talk about something related to the video game industry. Sometimes uh, it might be something that happened. Sometimes it might be, you know, a past game or whatever. This week we're talking about the big uh, Xbox reveal. Um, this is the second one of the summer. This was the um, first first party reveal as it turns out, because it uh, got announced, I think, today, maybe yesterday, um, recently, that they are going to be doing another one of these in August. No, mm -hmm. yeah, no date given for that yet, but I'm sure we'll hear it, you know, hear about it sooner or later. Anyway, this 
conference was about revealing first party titles. Um, at least mostly first party titles. You know, we'll get into it as we do the breakdown. And you know, before the main show, they had a pre-show where a whole bunch of stuff got announced. And I tell you what, man, I watched this presentation and I was thinking about taking a shot every time they said 4K 60 FPS, but I didn't have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Microsoft knows where their priorities lie. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like this is just kind of the eternal state of being for both Microsoft and Sony. You know, um, my, though Microsoft especially seems to be really go, going down um, the fidelity route. You know, it's like, it, yeah, it was all about you know how crisp the graphics are going to look, as opposed to you know what can you do with this new power. You know, th- that's definitely a thing I think Sony had had a better showing with um mm-hmm. you know in uh terms like horizon 2 and especially the new ratchet and clank game well like, i remember when i when sony, when sony did their thing their reveal i talked a lot about how i liked that their thing about oh our graphics are so much better especially for backgrounds that they didn't just use that to show off like super realistic backgrounds they also did really detailed and colorful like arty backgrounds uh microsoft mostly did what i was afraid sony was going to do Mm-hmm. like Th- meaning they're mostly showing off wow that sure does look approximately photorealistic yeah yeah y- you're not wrong like um but anyway getting into the actual announcements um from the pre-show uh, certainly the biggest things to come out of that were at the beginning and end, where uh, Dragon Quest Eleven S is coming to Xbox Game Pass and the Xbox ecosystem. Um, and also uh, the Eleven S is coming to the PlayStation 4 and the PC as well in December. Mm-hmm. Um, this, is a, this is a mixed bag because, mm-hmm. okay, on the one hand, we're getting the enhancements. We're getting the orchestrated music, um, which has been a big point of contention with Dragon Quest XI Vanilla, um, because like the composer uh, very explicitly does not did not want that uh, the orchestrated version of the Dragon Quest XI soundtrack released outside Japan. Like but he's a horrible they're... person, so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're not wrong about that at all, but. Um, uh, like uh, like um, mods have been made for Dragon Quest XI on PC to um, reintroduce the orchestrated version, and Square Enix has hit that with um, a like a DCMA strike. You know, like it, it's heavy shit to be playing around with that. Th- that's how adamant he was about th- this music not escaping Japan. So you know. Good that's that's being fixed. Uh, the 2D to 3D uh, thing is going to be there. You know, all the S stuff is going to be, you know, unfortunately, that also means that the visuals are going to take a downgrade because this is based off the, uh, the Nintendo Switch. And, of course, people are pissed off about this. Now, you know, and I don't you know, it's like, I'm, I'm not sure how easy it would have been to just add the S stuff to the play, the existing PlayStation and PC versions of the game. But, you know, you know, Microsoft doesn't have a version of Dragon Quest Eleven right now, so it would be understandable if they just got stuck with um, X, uh, you know, the 11S release. Uh, but anyway... Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum was 3D action platformer Balan Wonder World uh, being announced. Not Wonderland, Wonder World. <laughs> like, tr- trust me, this has been tripping up people left and right. Like even mm-hmm. Jeff called it uh, Balan Wonder uh, Wonderland. Like, yeah, and I think that's a kind of a hint, like that maybe you should have called it that. But you know, I'm not their, uh, you know, I'm not their branding committee, so. But in case you missed what this game was, it's the first collaboration of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog creators, uh, Yuji Naka, 
and Naoto Oshima in about 20 years. I'm guessing that they last collaborated on one of the Sonic Adventure games, yeah. given that time scale. No. Maybe, maybe like something else Sonic Team was doing at that particular moment in time, like uh, PSO or... Uh, I didn't know Billy Rock. Hatcher, actually. Billy I Hatcher did... was 2003. Huh. Last I thought time. that was earlier. Never mind. Hmm. Yeah, because keep in mind, if we're saying about 20 years, we're talking about right in the middle of the Dreamcast era of Sega. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, you know, point of order is, uh, you know, Sonic's daddies are getting back together and they are making a new, a uh, brand new uh, character uh, action platformer game. Um, not exactly sure how much of a platformer it actually is. You know, like in terms of jumping around and completing uh, jumping obstacles, but I'm sure we'll see more about this later. Yeah, um, the trailer gave a very big Nights into Dreams vibe. Mm-hmm. Once again, not unexpected. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's also worth noting that this isn't an Xbox exclusive. One of the one of the issues about having stuff announced at a platform specific event is they're going to announce it for that platform, that ecosystem, you know, or and PC at best. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get oh uh, yeah, it turns out Battle and Wonderworld is coming out for the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation Four as well. Um, mm-hmm. It's just in terms of next gen, uh, I think it's Xbox Series X only. I'm you know, I'm not entirely sure, or they couldn't announce that. You know, once again, it's you know, it's all a bit dicey when it comes to things about that. Um, yeah, it's one of those we'll find out later. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. anyway uh, rounding out the pre-show announcements, we had uh, free-to-play FPS Exomecha announced coming to Xbox next year. Um, turn-based adventure game Echo Generations coming to the Xbox Series X in 2021. Uh, and Halo Neighbor, and uh, uh, sorry, Hello Neighbor Two is coming to Xbox Series X. Okay, um, Halo, Halo Neighbor would be kind of an interesting concept. <laughs> you know, Microsoft uh, may have an opportunity there. <laughs> thinking about it, uh, you know, it's like, and if I shift to Halo, because well, getting to the main show, um, yeah, front and center, first thing shown off was Halo Infinite. Like, you know, um, not surprising, Halo Infinite's going to be the flagship release for the Xbox Series X. Um, And they did show off gameplay. They showed off, what, about eight, nine minutes of gameplay, I think? And my impression was, that looks like a Halo game, all right? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. No. I mean, it looked fairly decent for a Halo game, but also I do not care about Halo. <laughs> about where my level of interest lies in Halo. You know, granted, you know, I'm not most people, so, you know, obviously interest in this is the highest of uh, out of everything that was shown in the uh, Xbox conference. Well, yeah, there was a huge I'm just an I'm mostly Nintendo and PC games interest asterisk on that <laughs> no I, I get that i'm just saying in terms of you know what microsoft was showing off you know uh, you know in terms of like trailer views and other metrics halo infinite the the clear superstar um in terms of graphics um uh, honestly it looked pretty current gen but mm-hmm. that's not a surprise given like okay so halo infinite uh was originally supposed to be an xbox one title and has been in development for about five years. And the scuttlebutt behind the scenes has been it's been a rocky development. Which seems to be the case for every fucking 343 Industries Halo title. Yeah. Looking at you, yeah. Halo 4. <laughs> oh, fuck that. The original release of the Master Chief Collection. You know, oh, that was just God. an outright... Yeah, that was just an outright fucking disaster. Hey, no. at least when they at least when they gave away Master Chief helmets, they didn't have like fungal infections in them. <laughs> don't tempt them. Don't, don't tempt them. Uh, you know, and it looks like the big initial selling point of Halo Infinite is it's Halo, but open world now. <sighs> because you know, 
we haven't had enough of that particularly tired trend. You know? Yeah, so far it's looking like the only thing now current gen and next gen are good for. This is open world now. Well, when you're mm. talking about your biggest in focus on improvements of graphics being environmental graphics, then yes, open world is where you're going to see the biggest difference because there's going to be a ton of back like like background graphics. Mm-hmm. Or environmental graphics. But here's the thing, like Halo Infinite just not it's not just they're having an open world. It looks like it's the most staid, safe kind of open world you can have. You know, the fucking Ubisoft waypoints were there. Like, you know, I saw them on the map. Uh, I'm like, all you need is the fucking towers. In fact, I think wasn't Master Chief climbing a tower? I actually missed that. Hmm. Yeah, so... You know, it's like, it's more Halo. So... It's got that going for it. It's just, in terms of, you know, next-gen experiences, it's not, like, it's not really providing anything new. But I suppose that's, you know, that's kind of the Microsoft way, maybe. You know, and it's it's one of the reasons why I'm so not excited for next gen. Because, you know, what Next Gen used to be about was not just graphical fidelity, advancing of technology. That was a given. You know, it's about providing gameplay experiences that you couldn't do on previous generations of consoles. Yeah, yeah like the jump from, you know, early 32-bit to, you know, PS2 era. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Right. Yeah, it's like, you know, that kind of jump in processing powers made the open world game as we know it today possible at all mm-hmm. you know i mean you can make the argument that that thing kind of existed back in the playstation n64 era like you know the legend of zelda uh, although calling that an open world thing is interesting and in, uh, like even like the playstation 2 mm-hmm. but you know it, like graphical fidelity is the most boring of technological or gameplay advancements and that's mm-hmm. all that's really been happening basically since the like 360 ps3 generation yeah uh, i'm like i guess we got a little more cloud integration but eh? well, here's the thing. well here's the thing like gameplay in- innovation and all that stuff's been more on the indie scene mm-hmm. than you know the triple a yeah. because well yeah that's the thing the triple a games because they're so expensive yeah. are to a large extent very conservative in design and what kinds of stuff they're trying most right. of the actual like people willing to take risks are in indies right and you know get, getting back to the triple a set you know it's getting ever harder to build um triple a game uh you know more man hours more everything uh, you know, uh, and this will segue into the next announcement, which was State of Decay Three. Um, they so, they showed off a CGI trailer for State of Decay Three, mm-hmm. um, and uh, spoiler alert: most of what they showed off here were uh, CGI trailers, because State of Decay Three is apparently in pre 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 production or something like that. You know, it's. It's like at the conceptual phase. That sentence made my brain hurt. (laughs) I suppose it being the third State of Decay title makes uh, the conceptualizing pretty easy. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a zombie game. It's probably going to be another zombie game. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe involving zombie deers, but that's another problem with CGI trailers. Uh, <laughs> they're not actually representative of what was shown off. That's another yeah, thing. Well, a lot of these things, these videos, like said that they were in engine. That doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean it's going to actually look like that when you're playing it, because a lot of the times they do things with the camera that 
let's be frank, would be really fucking annoying if the camera did while you were playing the game. Or, you know, they can just downgrade the graphics or something like that. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Like, uh, you know, it's like that's, you know, the original Watch Dogs, for example. Um, Anyway, probably the most impressive thing in terms of uh, visual fidelity was the uh, Forza Motorsport uh, showcase. Um, Because... They actually showed in-engine in engine stuff. I think this is Forza Motorsport 8, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, you know, oh and God. they have touted it's going to, you know, it's going to be 4K, 60 FPS, and it's going to have ray tracing support. Ooh. Lest we forget, that's the other big buzzword of the next generation, ray tracing. And I admit that that is one of the more interesting things being developed because that is progressing things forward in not just oh hey look the graphics look uh sharper because if you don't yeah, know what I, I will, I, while i do not care about like photorealistic games the forza game did have some of the most realistic graphics i think i've ever seen mm-hmm. so in that end this is what ray tracing is ray tracing is um basically to get more naturalistic lighting into games um and the results have been pretty impressive. Like Minecraft, for example, looks very different with ray tracing on. Um, so, you know, this is why it's um, some of the hot new technology. How prevalent it will become remains to be seen. Um, let's see. Rare was up next, and they showed off Everwild again. I got to admit, I forgot this game existed. We all um, did. <laughs> mm hmm. And so this is another CGI trailer because apparently Rare isn't exactly sure what Everwild is going to be. Like apparently they're still kicking around ideas for it. So uh, you know that's that, great. <laughs> and you, you know it's like oh yeah th- that maybe you shouldn't have announced this if you're still yeah. conceptualizing what Everwild is. You know, this is why people get frustrated with games sometimes. You know, you announce it when you were, it was clearly not ready to be announced. And, you know, four or five years later, like, oh, hey, that's still in development. Anyway, um, Tell Me Why, which is the new collaboration between Microsoft and Don't Nod, uh, you know, pretty much the new Telltale games. Since Telltale died, you know, mm-hmm. they're the ones who are keeping alive the episodic adventure game thing. Uh, and indeed, Chapter One is uh, getting released on August 27th for the Xbox One and PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me why uh, that's the that's the adventure game series that's starring the non-binary protagonist. If I'm remembering correctly, or the, uh, or no, I think he was. I, I think uh, trans character. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's just been a while since Tell Me Why was uh, featured. Like that's the case with a lot of these games. Sorry, like, every time you say that, I have to bite my tongue. It's what it was announced as. I know. It's not me. Like, take it up with the naming committee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, next up was Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, it's getting because 60 FPS is as I once predicted long ago, no longer e fucking enough. Yeah, this was announced. It's going to get a 4K, uh, 120 FPS, uh, upgrade on the Xbox Series S or Fancy. Xbox Series X. Sorry, like, <sighs> uh, and yeah, that that's it is an upgrade to a pretty good game now. Uh, gonna be interesting to like, uh, though I'm it seems like they're accounting for that because you know, upgrading say a 2D action platformer isn't as e- like upgrading the frame rate can do bad things to it, you know. It, it's like changing the frame rate on a game isn't necessarily a case of oh, you can just upgrade it and it'll be better, 
it it matters on how your game logic and how your frames of animation were set to. Mm. Like, mm. you know, if this game was set to be at 60 FPS, upgrading it to 120 FPS is going to do not good thing. So I'm assuming that it was accounted for. Hopefully. We'll find out. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. Up next was The Outer Worlds. Pearl the Gorgon announced... Um, the first storyline DLC for The Outer Worlds uh, looked pretty needy. You know, uh, not much to say about this one. You know, it's storyline DLC, and it looks like it's going to be in keeping with what The Outer Worlds uh, idiom is. Let me see. Uh, Obsidian was uh, showcased with their next RPG announced. Uh Avowed. Uh, yeah. Look See, when this was there, I had to do a double check and make sure that Obsidian wasn't the people who do the Elder Scrolls. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was the big drop here. This is going to be their first uh, first person RPG. Yeah, Obsidian. They're known for doing RPGs, but they're not doing. They're not known for doing like Elder Scrolls style or um, like. You know, their last RPG series was the Pillars of Eternity, which was, you know, uh, much more, hey, look, it's an Infinity Engine game only in Unity kind of deal. Uh, But, you know, they've got a long RPG pedigree, and we'll see how Avowed pans out. Uh, Honestly, I'm trying to remember, like, the the thing that they featured in the trail. Like, it's it was so generic fantasy, if I'm being honest. Um... Let's see. Next up was As Dusk Falls, uh, which is I'm trying to like. Uh, I think it's a like a, this seemed to be maybe not necessarily a narratively driven uh, adventure game, maybe character driven, because like the studio that de- that's developing this, um, they're made up of Quantic Dreams vets, which. Worries me very much because you know, Quantic Dreams. <laughs> now, I'll grant you, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, thankfully, David Cage won't be writing this, so <laughs> somebody tur- takes yeah. off their mask and ends up being David Cage. No! <laughs> yeah, I'm like, so you know. The the point is the possible there exists the possibility that the writing here won't be absolute dog shit. Who yeah. is this mysterious writer, Egak Divad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, getting into more details of who is working on the game, uh, it is Interior Night. They're based off. They're based in London, um, which is interesting. Because, you know, uh, Quantic Dreams is a French studio. Um, but it, we can assume they have branches elsewhere. Um, anyway, uh, the studio is headlined by Carolyn Marshall, uh, former lead des- game designer for Quantic Dreams, Heavy Rain, and Beyond Two Cells. So that's interesting. You know, n- not somebody who did any of the writing on Quantic Dreams, but the game design. Which I don't think is, uh, which was probably the least memorable aspect of uh, David Cage's games. <laughs> so, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, okay, yeah. Probably my favorite trailer, my favorite thing at the show was Double Fine showed up with a new trailer uh, with Psychonauts 2. I really enjoyed the first Psychonauts game. Uh, one of the better platformers I've played, and, you know, I'm really impressed with how Psychonauts 2 is uh, shaping up. Um, it also involved yeah. diving into the brain, the mind of a brain in a jar, so we'll see how that goes. Psycho naughty, naughty I'm thinking. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it was also announced Jack Black, unsurprisingly, is going to have a role in the game and, you know, seems to be singing the title theme track to Psychonauts 2. Uh, like, Jack, ba- uh, Jack Black's been a big collaborator with uh, Double Fine since... Brutal Legend, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and he's also like the voice of the the, the Will of the Wisp thing in it in the game. Uh, but uh, 
game's been delayed to 2021, unfortunately. But, you know, COVID's having that effect on things. As long as it comes out at this point. Uh, Petty? As long as it comes out at this point. Right. Um, also worth noting, this game is coming out uh, uh, still on the PlayStation 4 among the, and the PC. Um, it, they are still obligated to do that. Because this was a game that was um, uh, not only announced, but pledged to uh, Kickstarter backers to come out on those platforms, and thus has a legal obligation to do that. Um, eh, there have been games that have not, but they are very frowned upon. So, well, well, it's uh, well. This is the difference between a legal obligation and not a legal obligation. If there's a contract saying you have to come out on a you know, it's like Wasteland 3. Uh, that still needs to come out on the PlayStation 4 because, you know, that's what they contracted uh, with Deep Silver to do uh, in Exile. So, because a contract cannot be altered by a third party that purchases another party. You know, it's like if they do make changes, that's, you know, that has to be uh, wrangled out legal. Anyway, um, moving forward... Destiny 2 is hitting the Xbox Game Pass in September alongside the latest uh, event expansion thing, Beyond Light. It's Destiny 2, so I could not give a fuck if you paid me to. Yeah, but I, I kind of like the gameplay, but the story, eh? You know, Which is weird because it's a bungee game. Yeah, I, I guess I can say that, yeah, I, I will agree with the assessment that Bungie's art direction is still strong, uh, 10 times stronger than 343's art direction. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Destiny 2 looks better than Halo Infinite. Not, not necessarily from a fidelity standpoint, but I just noted, like, yeah, the art direction looks better. Um, you know, when I saw Destiny 2. So... Um, sh maybe surprisingly, um, in terms of, uh, like, like in terms of viewership and other data metrics, uh, the, no the highest charting non Halo Infinite thing from the Xbox conference was Stalker 2. Like, which is kind of surprising to me because I know, st like, the Stalker fan base is pretty rabid, but I didn't think that there was that many of them. Especially since it's been about 10 years since the Stalker game came out. Now, yep. Though this definitely came across as a, like, this is a thing that is a live kind of deal. Because Stalker 2 has been, let's just say, in development hell for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know. And, but, you know, I know some people who are very excited about this. You know, not the least of which is our friend Silver at Night Dive. Uh, anyway, uh, probably like probably the most interesting game that was say Psychonauts two, uh, or uh, you know if we're taking the pre-show into account, uh, what were these games? Uh, Dual Reality and the Gunk. Uh, uh, yeah, a Dual Reality uh, game, the medium. Mm. You know. It, like th that, it looked weird because yeah. you know when they were showing up the game, I I kept thinking, okay, is this a comparison video? Like, <laughs> it was one side of the screen supposed to look, uh, you know, that one much better than the other. Which I, yes, it kind of is, but that's because that's what the gameplay is. Right, right. I'm just saying it's one of those, but no, you are actually playing that simultaneously. Yeah, I yeah. the simultaneously part is what kind of puts me off a little bit. Understandable. Yeah. See, what uh, I'm wondering is if you're supposed to play it like with a divider in the middle of the screen, so one of your eyes is seeing one side and the other eye is seeing the other side. I'm guessing that's one of those details we'll learn as it goes along. Um, as far as the gunk goes, so uh, this is being developed by... Uh, the Steamworld Dig developers. So, 
you know, that's why it has so much personality to it. Like, this, you know, Siri, uh, you know, especially a cartoony personality. Um, I like, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I'm trying to remember if it was just CGI or if they actually showed off what this game is supposed to be. You know. Also, been a while since we've got uh, we've gotten a game with a title like The Gunk. Yeah, and worth noting that the, the Gunk is a full, full Xbox ecosystem exclusive. No PlayStation yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, now these are also like the third-party collaborations that they um, showed off. Uh, and these are all, like, all of these were Xbox console exclusives, or they are launching first on Xbox. You know, however we define that term in the modern time, um, not including PC. Like, um, anyway... Uh, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide was announced. Uh, if you're familiar with Vermin Tide, this is basically that, but in Warhammer 40k. And uh, moving forward, uh, the Tetris Effect Connected was announced, a multiplayer version of the Tetris Effect. I'm also assuming this is why the Tetris Effect hasn't hit Steam yet. It, it, um, it's not Tetris Effect 99. No. Maybe? Like, it, <laughs> no, like I think it's more it multiplayer. It, it wasn't that multiplayer. Yeah. Though I'm not sure that if they announced how many uh, players are going to be connected. Like, Find out. Yeah, that's the thing. So I can't say, like, I can't say if it's not going to be like Tetris 99, but, you know, with neon. <laughs> All the neon. Yeah. Um, Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis was announced uh, for Which has some people very excited and a lot of people puzzled <laughs> um, Probably more notable Fantasy Star Online 2 is also coming to Steam on September 5th with some exclusive Steam content so you know people will be able to purchase this from a store that people actually use because mm -hmm. Already on the fucking Microsoft Store, but you know that would require using the Microsoft Store. And People to say it was broken that. would be an understatement. Yeah, I've experienced that. It is. <laughs> That's why I'm staying away from it for now. Because ha <laughs> no, yeah. never again for me. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, you know, we use the Microsoft Store for like one game review. I hope never to do that again. Mm hmm. Um, let's see, uh, you know, nearing the end of announcements here, uh, they showed off the campaign mode for the upcoming FPS, Crossfire X. And I don't think that, like, okay, so the problem is, okay, Crossfire is a very, very, very huge IP in certain parts of the world. This is a huge IP in, like, South and East Asia. You know, like, uh, I think, like, the game originates from Korea, if I'm remembering correctly. And, you know, it's a big mobile free-to-play title. It is not a big title over here. Um, and I don't think Microsoft has really uh, done the legwork in making it, like, as big a deal in those countries as it is here. I mean, you know, so good luck with that. Uh, here we go. Forza Horizon 4 and Sea of Thieves will be enhanced for the Xbox Series X. I think that, you know, standard 4K 60 FPS upgrades. Mm -hmm. And finally, the series, uh, the uh, conference capped off with the announcement of a new Fable game. Uh, once again... It, Entitled uh, Fable. Yeah. That's it. Like, all we got was another CGI trailer with, you know... Oh, hey, it's Fable's humor showing up. As long as they have Peter Molyneux bound and gagged, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, so Fable is coming to us from Forza Horizon developer Playground Games. Uh, in fact, like this game has been rumored to be in development for a long time. So 
I wasn't too surprised to see Fable show up because I knew it was a thing beforehand. If I'm remembering the rumor mill correctly, I think it's supposed to be a reboot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would explain why it's named Fable. Yes. So you know we're gonna be we're in, we're gonna end up calling it Fable 2021, uh, and I suppose it's or also Fable, important... Fable remake or reboot or whatever. Yeah, I, I suppose it's also important to note that um, Fable has already been rebooted, or at least Fable One. Uh, you know, like uh, they did an Xbox 360 remake that was, you know, not as good. Oh God, we're not going into that, are we? <laughs> we don't have to. I'm Thank just God. saying that is a, like uh, that is a thing that happened. In fact, that was like the last released game from Lionhead Studios. Not the last thing they worked on. Uh, that was Fable Legends, which was just kind of a fucking disaster. <laughs> the biggest oof. One of them, like a seventy-five uh, million dollar oof, mm-hmm. if, you believe, if you believe the rumors. You know, seventy-five million dollars to develop a free-to-play game. And yeah, that is the reason why Lionhead is not a thing that exists. <laughs> yeah. And in case you want to know what the previous Fable remake was called, it's Fable Anniversary. Um, it's technically available on Steam, but it's not worth getting because it's broken as hell. And you can also get Fable the Lost Chapters for way, way, way less money. Mm-hmm. And like a- they have mods to give it same gra- pretty close to the same graphic fidelity. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, just looking at the prices here, Fable Anniversary is thirty four ninety nine. Fable the Lost Chapters is nine ninety nine. That's, you know, and that's not even going into DLC. Mm-hmm. But it's like even on, and when you get on sale, like I think I saw anniversary for ten dollars, and well, uh, the lost chapters like goes for two dollars. You know, it's like just buy the lost chapters on Steam mm-hmm. until they break its compatibility with insert current operating system. Get just get lost chapters. Well, that shouldn't really happen. Well. That's a concern for a future day. Yeah, that doesn't happen that's, anytime soon. Yeah, like f- future versions of Windows or whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, like how you can't run some games designed from Windows 95 on Windows uh, 10. Yeah. Yep. Back anyway, so when... oh, yeah, in terms of first party showcases, they, like, I believe they said that nine studios out of their. Um, First party lineup showed off things um, because uh, thinking about it, uh, I don't think I don't like uh, was Hellblade. T- no, Hellblade Two was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's like no, this list is missing Hellblade Two. In fact, they released a developer diary after the show. Like that also looked pretty decent, as far as I can say, as someone who never played the original but yeah. heard good things about it. Well, it's kind of the opposite of what the Hellblade 1 was in terms of scope. I mean, okay, um, Hellblade was supposed to be the start of this triple A indie uh, idea. And you can see how well that ultimately worked out because you know Ninja Theory ended up selling out to Microsoft for more resources. Because yeah, it turns oh, out if you want to make a game with triple A trappings as an indie... Uh, you're going to need funding, and the easiest way to get funding is by being less indie. <laughs> That's a good summation of that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so uh, Microsoft has pledged to do another one of these in August, and presumably that's where we're going to see like whatever, whatever non-Wasteland 3 thing in Exile has cooked up. Um Whatever, like, the first game from the initiative, I know it's been a hot-button topic. Um, Compulsion Games hasn't had a game announced. Uh, they're kind of like the forgotten Microsoft acquisition because, well, they're they're the developers of We Happy Few. Let's just say that game didn't turn out too well. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And also another thing that's been conspicuous by its absence for a long time is Age of Empires 4. No. Um, it's been a few years since that's been shown off or announced or uh, whatever. Like, we are presuming that it's still in development. Um, hopefully that is still the case. Anyway, so, yeah, that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon. Um, if you enjoyed what you heard tonight, be sure to uh, click the bell button, um, hit subscribe. You know, you do all the things that you need to do to keep abreast of what a channel does. Uh, and the week ahead. So no Friday show this week. Uh, and on the Sunday reviews, we will be having games. We'll be reviewing the following games. We'll be reviewing Equin the Lantern, which is a um, roguelike mixed win with an actual RPG. Like, there are actual RPG mechanics going on in, in battle. Um, and it's a more pure rogue thing than you, than what we usually review on the show. Um, more on that on Sunday. Uh, we we're having a review of Dread Nautical on the PlayStation 4. Um, so that's going to be Petty's. Um, a review of Gun Crazy for the Nintendo Switch. Um, I think I have that one. Let me check in a minute. Yeah. Um, well, I know I got a copy for Petty and myself because it was uh, pretty uh, pretty dirt cheap during the Steam sale. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's another Rada Likia game. I'm uh, just going to put that forward. And uh, Roki. Uh, Roki is a uh, narrative-based adventure game that is based off of Scandinavian legend. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also worth noting, it's an actual adventure game with actual puzzles. You know, it's not a, uh, let's just say, one step up above a walking simulator thing where you technically have actions and puzzles, but it's more insert the thing to the thing. Like, or a visu visual novel where you can manually walk around. Something like that. No, it's like there are actual puzzles that I have to figure out and use logic to solve. You know, Hopefully no pies to throw at Yetis. I haven't encountered anything that brain twisty. Honestly, I'm having... a I'm having, like, the biggest problem I'm having with the game is it's a bit unfocused in its design. Um, but more on that on Sunday. So until then, I shall wish you good gaming.